Let me read to you a passage from the 12th chapter of St. Mark's Gospel, verses 35 to 37. It's the Gospel for Friday of the ninth week in Ordinary Time, Year 2. St. Mark writes, While Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he asked, How is it that the teachers of the law say that the Christ is the son of David? David himself, speaking by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? The large crowd listened to him with delight. That's from Mark chapter 12 verses 35 to 37. And what does it suggest to us? Well, you know, one of the many things we notice about Jesus Christ as portrayed in the Gospels is his love for, his reverence for, and his use of what the Christian calls the Old Testament. For the Christian, the New Testament, consisting of the Gospels, the Acts of the Apostles, the Letters, and the Book of Revelation, constitute the high point of the inspired scriptures because they bring forward the figure and the teaching of Jesus the Messiah and the Son of God. The four Gospels are the most important part of the New Testament precisely because the person of Jesus is portrayed with the greatest clarity and he is the object of the Christian religion. He is the one whom the Christian loves whom he serves and follows in life, and the Gospels provide him and the entire Church with the means of contemplating his very person and growing in love for and obedience to him. But there is the danger for the Christian of neglecting the Old Testament because of the wealth and the importance of the New. And this would constitute an impoverishment and the neglect of an inspired resource that nourishes our appreciation of the Christ of the Scriptures. Let us remember this, that we see Christ time and again referring to the Scriptures and making use of them to teach, to combat error coming from his enemies, the scribes and Pharisees, to confirm in their faith his own disciples, to illustrate his own mission and even to confound Satan, as we see in his dialogue with the devil following his baptism. Following his rising from the dead, he walked from Jerusalem to Emmaus, giving two of his disciples a lengthy lesson in the meaning of the scriptures. Now, the inspired scriptures, used and loved by our Lord and the infant church, was none other than the Old Testament, used by our Lord in the Hebrew and by the infant church in both the Hebrew and the Septuagint Greek. This thought ought to inspire us to love and use the Old Testament assiduously too. It is inspired by God, just as the New Testament is, and so it should be used with great reverence. Our Gospel passage today that I read earlier gives us an instance of our Lord making use of the Old Testament, which in the Gospels he refers time and again as, <clears throat> as the Scriptures and at times as the Law and the Prophets. Today he makes reference to one of the Psalms. He asks the people to whom he is speaking what David meant when Speaking by the Holy Spirit, he declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I put your enemies under your feet. Our Lord here teaches that David was inspired by the Holy Spirit when he wrote this. And so he is confirming the divine inspiration of the Scriptures, in this case of the Psalms. And he is indirectly confirming also the personhood of the Holy Spirit. 
the Holy Spirit is not just a force or a divine action. He is a divine person who inspired the author to write. And here, in this particular instance, he intimates that the inspired psalm suggests the divinity of the future Messiah, David's human descendant. Our Lord says, David himself calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? Our Lord is showing how the Old Testament points to him and how his own teaching about himself and about his mission is the light that makes plain the, tr the true meaning of the Old Testament. So when we think of the Old Testament, we must, we must remember that it is a large corpus of writings of a great variety of genre. The entire collection is inspired by God. Now, what is its meaning? It has one divine author who worked through numerous human writers, but what is that one divine author endeavouring to teach? The Church has a clear answer to this question, and her answer comes from her founder. The Old Testament, directly and indirectly, explicitly and implicitly, remotely and proximately, dimly and at times clearly, taught about the Messiah to come and the divine work he would do. It was the blessing to come, not only for the chosen people, but for all mankind. That blessing was the person of Jesus. Christ is the meaning of the Old Testament, and our Gospel today is an example of our Lord teaching on this. Every Sunday at Mass, the first reading of the Liturgy of the Word is drawn from the Old Testament. It is followed by another selection from the Old Testament, a psalm. Both are meant to point to and to illustrate the Gospel passage for the day. And the Church selects the Old Testament reading precisely in view of the content of the Gospel passage. Let that prompt us to read the Old Testament regularly. Why not consider reading at least part of a chapter each day, but doing so with the figure of Christ continually before you, for He is the meaning of the entire Scriptures.